Facebook. Good evening, everybody. I welcome you all at today's lecture, Anna Bhau Sate Life, Literature and Struggle, organized by Dr. Vijeshri Priya Darshini as a part of Government of India's initiative, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Uh, we are remembering uh, less known freedom fighter and social reformer who contributed immensely in uh, during our freedom struggle and after that uh, uh, to reform our society. So today we are going uh, to, re to, to remember Anna Bhau Sathe. And it's also important to remember him because last year uh, we celebrated his 100th birth anniversary. He was a prolific writer uh, and Dalit fighter. And uh, he has written more than 35 novels, um, hundreds of songs, and he is very, uh, very popular among among the Dalit uh, scholars, literary persons, and masses. So today we have Dr. Gopani to speak about Anna Bhau, uh, uh, Anna Bhau Sate. Uh, Dr. Gopani is an associate professor at GB Pant Social Science Institute, uh, Allahabad. And uh, his area of research interests include critical thinking, caste, Dalit studies, and right now he is working on a manuscript titled Justice for in Invisible Dalits, uh, Mobilization and Struggle of the Most Marginalized Dalit. So Dr. Kopani will speak uh, about 40 to 50 minutes. And we have Dr. Van Kheri to respond to him. And Dr. Van Kheri is an assistant professor at Center for Political Studies, Jawaharlal Nehru. And he will uh, he will respond to uh, Dr. Gopani's um, lecture in 10 to 15 minutes. Then we will have question answer session for 10 to 15 minutes. This is so, Dr. Gopani. Now you may please start. Okay. So thank you, uh, Nishikant uh, Kolge ji. So is it clear now? Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks for the kind words. Uh, first of all, I thank uh, Priyadarshini, Madam, for uh, inviting me to this lecture. I also thank uh, CSDS Fraternity. Uh, and also, I thank uh, uh, Professor Chinna Rao uh, uh, for showing interest and encouraging me to uh, work on the Anabhav Satil life and literature. Uh, I'm also happy to share this conversation with uh, Arish, Arish Wangte, uh, and others who are participating in this discussion. Uh, so I keep reading Arish uh, writings. Uh, it's really you know, important and learning many things from those writings. I, at outset, I must confess that uh, there are you know, challenges and limitations to my presentation. Because uh, precisely because Anabhav Sate born and brought up in Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. And uh, he extensively written in Marathi. I come from Teluga, Telangana, so I know Marathi. So that means the whatever literature that I'm trying to read and learn are mostly from the popular writings which are produced on online and other uh, uh, material. Uh, discussions with the friends from Maharashtra, 
the online videos and some of the you know writings that are produced uh, recently on anavasate in english so the most of the writings are not translated into other uh, indian languages so mostly uh, the anavasate writings are available largely in marathi but however uh, uh, so three things impressed me a lot uh, on anabhav life and struggle is literary work so when i visited maharashtra for a research work on uh, i was working on a most marginalized dalits and trying to understand the most marginalized dalits struggles mobilization uh, so i went to maharashtra one or two times particularly for the research uh, particularly in the mong community so during that time i i have seen many memorials uh, many discussions around anavasate then i inquired so who is anavasate then i realized that he is one of the legendary writer who was uh, not uh no who is not discussed much in both academic and popular uh, in uh, non academic writings so there was there is no serious engagement i thought then the kind of the amount of literature that he produced uh, impressed me a lot and the second he was worked as an organic intellectual of the dalit communities who you know who has produced literature in very novels short stories and the playwrights hundreds of these songs and many art forms it transformed into a, a, a art form which is useful for the social message so if you google you will get many hundreds of the videos in youtube largely available in marathi uh, one or two you will find in hindi but uh, there are no lectures uh, in english but only one you will find by milind uh, avad so these things impressed me a lot and also third working in communist movement becoming a legendary writer coming from mang community itself is something inspiring story i think that made me to uh, think a lot but i know the limitations and challenges but still when i spoke to uh, uh, vijay sri madam so she said no no problem because we have to bring the unknown figures who have contributed immensely to the nation nation building to the marginalized groups and subaltern communities so their contributions struggle literature help us to enrich the emancipatory discourse uh, in the larger academic world in the knowledge production so therefore so one has so she said you we have to engage that is was really motivating so what i will do is i will try to read out some of the you know i already shared my rough draft uh, with the industry madam and arish so i have roughly written so i will be you may be coming across some repetition some information rather than more theoretically sophisticated arguments but i would like to share my rough ideas with you and please bear with me so i'll just try to read out uh, and have a some uh, discussion with you anubhav sate was a writer thinker leader and popularly known as lok shahir in maharashtra he was born in a mong migrated from watagam village to mumbai due to poverty and famine in the region 
He was not formally educated. However, he began to read and write when he actually participated in Communist Party of India in Matunga labor camp in Mumbai. He became a full-time cadre of party and produced enormous literature for the social change. He wrote 32 novels, 13 short stories collection, one traveler, hundreds of songs, many povadas and street plays and so on. Based on his novels, seven films are made. His writings focus on caste, class, gender, inequalities and exploitation. He transformed and used folk traditions of Maharashtra like Tamasha, Jalsa, Lavani performance to communicate the masses for the social change among masses. However, in his later phase of life, he was attracted towards Ambedkarite thinking. He dedicated his classic novel, Fakira, to Baba Sahib Ambedkar. He was initiated and delivered a keynote address to the first Dalit Literary Conference, which was organized in 1958. Though he was produced enormous literature and significantly contributed for the support and literature, he was invisibilized for a long time. However, with the emergence of Dalit and Hmong mobilization in contemporary Maharashtra, Anubhav Sate re-emerged as a, an iconic thinker who inspired the uh, Dalit Bhojan communities. This, uh, this lecture, this paper, is aimed at understanding Anubhav Sate, life, literature, and struggle through the perspective of Dalit intellectual tradition. Anubhav Sate works are published largely in Marathi. The translation in English are very few. The research work on Anubhav Sate is not engaged either in the in scholarly engagement on Anubhav Sate. Many activist writers in vernacular language, particularly in Marathi, have been producing popular write-ups in various social media and other platforms. So I draw its uh, I draw so from the English translations. Recently, Penguin, I think six six months back, Penguin have has published a, a translated novel called Fakira. I think after many years, almost uh, seventy years. So now one English translation is available uh, by Penguin. So recently uh, they have published. And also uh, I have seen, I have read uh, a million about a small book uh, on Annabau Sate life and literature, I think which is available. Uh, that is one of the important attempt to understand the journey of Anubhav Sate from communist to Ambedkarite uh, thinking. So, and also there is a one another uh, book uh, published by Sahitya Academy uh, in the uh, in the uh, series of uh, makers of Indian literature. In 1999, they have published a. a small monograph uh, by uh, Bajran Kode. It is a mostly documenting a kind of uh, uh, outlining Anubhav Sate life and also literary works, not exactly theoretically dealing with the uh, larger issues. So there is also another article which I read, uh, uh, which is published in uh, EPW uh, by C.V. Sibel, uh, yeah, K.V. Sibel, sorry, K.V. Sibel published in uh, 2013. So other, uh, there are other uh, small writers in uh, the print, uh, and other in uh, Round Table India and other uh, uh, platforms. So we, these are the available source and there are uh, a, a small, uh, because there are continuously uh, 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 degree college lecturers in the non-date in uh, 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 
in a local level. So some of the degree college lecturers who are particularly from the English literature background also constantly producing uh, small write-ups. Uh, every year they organize uh, uh, seminars, but uh, because the so-called mainstream academics do not pay much attention, so their contributions uh, not become very visible and seriously not engaged. The, those uh, small material also I got, I keep talking to them. So, as I said, my title at the presentation is uh, uh, in the original, I title it as a Thinking Through Dalit Intellectual Traditions, uh, Anubhav Sati Life, Literature and uh, Struggle. I have to little bit discuss on Dalit intellectual traditions, because though there is a, uh, there are attempts to, you know, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Dalit uh, historiography, the Dalit writings of history, they need to focus on intellectual uh, historiography, Dalit intellectual traditions. So therefore, there is a need of you know, discussion on the Dalit intellectual traditions. And later I will focus on uh, Anubhav Swati, how we understand his contribution towards this Dalit intellectual tradition. The emergence of Dalit intellectual historiography is aimed at understanding the history of ideas and intellectual traditions are diversified, depend on the personalities and context and text and so on. However, these traditions immensely influence and shape, shape the human perceptions, worldviews, and visions. While the intellectual historiography is deal, is, deals with the ideas, it is bound to deal with the contestation of ideas which produce the alternative imagination of history, politics, culture, and nation. India is known for its diversified intellectual tradition. Some are in complementary, others are in contestation. Nevertheless, the knowledge production uh, is hierarchized and monopolized by the Brahmanical forces within the Varna caste structures. The Brahmanical hegemony on written tradition or uh, uh, written tradition through Sanskrit text or oral tradition is continued to exist. This process denies uh, the Dalit intellectual work and it's uh, their contribution. Hence, the excluded communities, life, creation, aesthetics, experience, and knowledge not only undermined, but also stigmatized. Therefore, one could see the consistent, consistent continuous domination and resistance in knowledge production in Indian intellectual tradition. The contestation between Brahmanical and Shamanic philosophical traditions are inspired many ancient, medieval, colonial, and contemporary liberation movements. The genealogy of Dalit intellectual traditions can be traced from Charvakas, Buddhism, uh, in the ancient period, Lokayatas, in medieval, in the Bhakti, uh, uh, radical Bhakti uh, movement, like Basavana, Ravidas, Chokamela, and others. It also continues when it comes to colonial period. If you see the and Savitri Bhai Pule, Pule, uh, so Ayankali, Bhagaradi Varma, Achitanand, Periyar, and many Ambedkar, and many others. So who have taken the uh, historical legacy of the anti-caste intellectual traditions and the articulated and asserted in different forms across uh, India, in different the various Dalit autonomous assertions like the Adi Hindu, Adi Dravida, Adi Kataka, Mul Bharati, Namshudra movements in various states have generated their own organic intellectuals, writers, and leaders. Historical role in rewriting history, politics, and culture. This rich epistemic inquiry and emancipatory visions have been undermined and deliberately said in both formal and informal scholarly discussions. So the history, historiography of Dalit intellectual traditions 
has played a vital role in critiquing the methods of Brahmanical knowledge systems and its hegemony. Therefore, it is engaged, it engages in interrogating the nationalist critique of uh, colonial modernity and Western knowledge frameworks. While there are attempts in mapping subaltern historiography through subaltern studies collective by Indian elite scholarship, it failed to organically connect with the subalterns and document the alternative visions. Thus, Dalit intellectual discourse become an emancipatory discourse carries greater potential to reorient Indian knowledge systems. This history, uh, Dalit history, text, culture, visions, life, aesthetics, and labor become a new tools for knowledge production. This demands, this demands new methods of evaluation and philosophical inquiry. The recent debates in Indian social science on Dalit experience, who is eligible to theorize Dalit uh, experience and the nature of Indian social science and knowledge production clearly uh, brought the questions to rethink intellectual traditions and knowledge production from the perspective of the below. Both colonial and post-colonial intellectual activities of Dalits are influenced by variety of socio, religious, and political movements. Hence, any homogenization of Dalit intellectual history writings will miss the diversified ideas, locations, experiences, and visions that continue to exist within the Dalit communities. Therefore, the meanings of emancipation of Dalits among Dalit intellectuals, organizations, and leaders are sometimes complementary and another time contested. However, you could see in Maharashtra, Maharashtra is well known for many social movements. The anti-caste movements in the state had deeply influenced the Dalit mobilization and assertions across India. While there are studies on documenting and analyzing the anti-caste movements and its leaders, there is always an invisibility of some organic intellectuals within the Dalit discourse. One such thinker and organic intellectual is Anna Bhavasat. Anna Bhavasat is... So in this session, I'm trying to... Uh, uh, focus that there is a need of Dalit, uh, there is a need of having a discussion on Dalit intellectual traditions and its contribution towards uh, knowledge production. Though there are attempts in documenting Ambedkar's biographies, struggles, uh, the Ayotedas, Achutan, and, and there are and, radicals, there is a long way to go. And also the Dalit, uh, uh, Dalit discourse, the so-called uh, institutional Dalit discourse is largely focused uh, so the very few individuals uh, and there is a need to focus going beyond those individuals. That's where, because in the last uh, uh, para, I was trying to say that we have focused mostly on one or two communities leaders uh, who become more visible. And uh, there is at least some documentation and some scholarly work, whether it is Achyutanand, Ayotedas, Ambedkar, Pradeti Varma, and so on. But there is a need to focus like communities who are not become visible in the mainstream and their thinkers is also very equivalently important. For example, from Tamil Nadu. So we have, uh, we talk, often we talk about Ayotedas, MC Raja, Retamala Srinivasan, but we somehow miss the uh, LC Guruswami. So if we, in the same case, when we talk about the uh, Dalit intellectual traditions in Maharashtra, uh, we talk 
ಅಂಬೇಡ್ಕರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪೂಲೆ ಸಾವಿತ್ರಿಬಾಯಿ ಪೂಲೆ ಸಾಹು ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಚೋಕ ಮೇಲ ಬಟ್ ಎಟ್ ಅನಭವ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಇನ್ವಿಜಿಬಲ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ಅದರ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಫಾರ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಫೋಕಸ್ ದಿ ಅನ್ನೋನ್ ಫಿಗರ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ಹಾವ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ to the dalit men's petri literature and politics so though there is a attention in documenting the dalit literature in maharashtra which is also got a attention of translating into english language uh, the literature of the anabhavsada is largely neglected that's where the study studying anubhav sate engaging with the anubhav literature and struggle became a significant anubhav sate was born on august 1 1920 in mangwada of watagaon watagaon is located in walwa taluka in sangli district maharashtra anubhav was belongs to mang or matang caste which is a most backward and lowest um, lowest caste among dalit since they are treated as lowest in caste hierarchy their hearts are are also outside of the village anubhav sate original name is tukar in prevailing family and village cultural traditions representing elder his more in more instead of first name in the family so they begin to add anna in the process his original name tukaram relegated into the background then it is known as anna bahu sate with father name added anna spent his childhood in miserable conditions he had 20 uh, miserable conditions so due to poverty famine conditions in that region anavav sate father decided to go to bombay and they had, uh, he migrated to the bombay and uh, when anavav sate grew uh, uh, was growing uh, at family so he was uh, he was involving in the uh, singing uh, singing he was because since mang community also associated with the many cultural forms uh, the art groups singing groups so anubhav sate was also involved in those uh, no singing troops so he used to attend the wherever this troops uh, no uh, organize the uh, cultural uh, festivals and so on so in a way is uh, childhood is uh, involved in uh, learning singing playing it, you know music instruments which are closely associated with his family and his community so he is interested is in the childhood itself he began to uh, no emotional uh, no attachment with these art forms so with anubhav sate uh, with his father he anubhav sate attended many fairs along with a cousin brother on his mother's side and his tamasha one uh, uh rateri Uh, during the performance of the tamasha in one scene kranti sinna nara nana patel appeared and delivered a speech which greatly inspired anubhav sate from this anubhav sate began to participate in movement due to anubhav unexpected radical change in his thinking valubai asked her husband bahu sate bahu sate is the father of anubhav sate they so they decided to take them when family is uh, take to bombay so from watergaon to bombay they have uh, 
they took two months to reach the Bombay. And when they have reached uh, with their family, when they reached, Anubhav Sate worked in different uh, places uh, along with his father. Anubhav Sate reached Bailuka, a suburb, suburb of Bombay, towards the western side of a Masjur in Baikula. There was a spacious Chandi B chawal in those days. They, uh, at the age of 14, 15, Anna did many jobs, like a boy who would carry on his head a trunk full of old and new clothes, advertising them for an itinerary retail merchant of garments. With ongoing movements in Bombay, Anna was influenced because during the, those times, so there are many movements which are, are happening in Bombay. So to those movements, Anna was attracted. He used to discuss many national, international issues with friends. He was influenced by various political organizations and sil silent films began to face meetings, distributing pamphlets, and so on. He also began to sing songs, ballads, and participate in the plays. His active involvement may, made him to use enormous literature. So since he was working Matunga uh, so he began to get a contact with the Communist Party of India, its cadre, workers, and attending dharnas, you know, meeting the people, meeting the leaders. In a way, he began to you know, get influenced by the, those movements, leaders, literature. So as I said, this background uh, created a, a, a orientation through which Anabo began to uh, realize the importance of the education and the importance of writing. I think his interaction, his, uh, his migration from Wategaon to Bombay itself is a, a very important transition. And also second is interaction with the Communist Party of India, Kader to him to read and write. Uh, so in a way he educated himself and began to read and write and also get a, a kind of consciousness which helped him to understand the society. So it created a space, it also, that moment created uh, create a given a tools to him to express. So this environment uh, no, made him to produce an enormous literature. As I said, he produced 32 novels. Imagine a situation, he born in 1920 and he died in nine, uh, 1969. In 49 years of his age, he produced 32 novels, uh, 13 short story anthologies, many povadas, plays, songs, one traveler, and so on. So that means, it seems to me that there was no single day, of course, when he began to read and write, let us say in 90, uh, at the age of 16 or 70s, he began to write from that age. So until his death, he was not missed a single day without writing anything. So otherwise producing this much enormous literature is impossible. So that, I think that uh, uh, is something very, you know, impressed me. Coming from a Hmong community, which is, which is considered with considered to be lowest among the Dalits. And no, Anubhav Sate formally not educated. 
and when he interacted with the movements he began to write in write in a such a way that he able to reorient the uh, marathi literary field i think that is so interesting anubhav sati gradually evolved as an organic intellectual who produced the literature of the oppressed it is not an exaggeration to say that in anubhav sati life there is no single day with which goes without writing anything that is why within 49 years of his life he produced what i said uh, he produced an enormous literature anubhav sati in his early life wrote songs poetry on mosquitoes and other small labor related problems when he was uh, in the beginning days of his uh, bombay life so he wrote novels in the later stage of his life many novels are published in the mid of the 1990s for wider circulation maharashtra government published anubhav sate works entitled anubhav sate samagra vangmay anubhav sate is himself emphasized is the literary stand in the introduction of his novel vijayanta as follows before to write before before beginning to write i have learned the principles that the artist who cares for the people is taken care of in turn by them i strongly believe in the conflict of the people of my country i dream everybody that my country i dream everybody that my country should be happy civilized full of prosperity and equality and equal uh, equal and maharashtra should become an earthly paradise i write while i am continue to see such dreams you can't see the truth in life by using the eyes of imagination and ingenuity your heart has to be catch it it whatever a writer's eyes see may not necessarily help the writer on the contrary it may betray him i strongly believe that this earth is not held in the balance on the head head of vishnu sheshana it is held in balance on the forms of dalits i am trying to portray the lives of dalit people with honesty and conviction anubhav sate was a great novelist he wrote many novels which reflect the time in which anubhav was living the period in there was a discussion and debate on the nature and purpose of the marathi literature among literary circles most of the novelists are belongs to upper caste and writings on the middle class uh, writings focused on middle class aspirations problems life and so on there was also a dominant view that literature has to be sacred and should be should carry the aesthetic values these are the values determined by the upper caste and which since it is dominated by the the upper caste literary writers obviously the literary field was you know created a kind of frameworks which uh which shoots the upper caste aesthetic and literary uh, no values in those day in those with those uh, in that context with that background in a way the upper caste determined and hegemonized the literary field in that kind of background anubhav sate began to write his novels reflecting on social realities his community experience and exploitation uh, uh, he focused on is is experience and exploitation and so on these themes and forms are radically changed with the anubhav sate writing bajrang kode as i said uh, who also who published a book a monograph uh, by sahitya academy in 1999 so he uh, divided his uh, novels 32 novels into four categories one is novels on courage 
so there are many uh, novels i may not uh, i may not read it so novels on women problems third novels about love in rural setting fourth novels about rural life so these are four categories broadly bajrang kode uh, no categorized anubhav sate novels milind avat as i said in the beginning he brought a monograph on anubhav sate life and literature he observes i quote milind avat on the, the the nature and the themes and characters of the anubhav sate he is commenting on anubhav sate novels i quote anubhav sate created separate niche for himself in in his novel about heroes that arose from exploitative conditions bandwala ramoshi sultan don garcha raja and parari parari uh, although a lot like nilu is one sense the stories are always about read 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 distribution and justice and victory these stories leave us with a dalit mythology a location from which a history that was written criminalized and a moral has been recovered into a history of where the struggles for food in hunger are not written as a theft where the resource to decoity is not seen as a criminal but as a nationalistic these stories provide us with an understanding of anubhav sate conception of history and his role in its creation i think this in his novels as i said it it re you know uh, reverse the characters because most of the the upper caste literary writings create a, a hero protagonist of the novels and other stories from the upper caste uh, uh, create a kind of image that they are the saviors of the the subalterns or the dalits i think with anubhav sate literary uh, intervention is characters of the novels uh, comes from his own caste matang community nomadic communities mang mahar communities so heroes are coming from the communities which are considered to be a criminal i think he is reversing the the you know characters with that he creating a kind of imagination where they themselves are the uh the voice of their own community so that's where uh, uh, milin uh, uh, right point out that a, a struggle for the resources to decaity is not seen as a criminal but as a nationalist so in the same way anubhav sate was a prolific writer of short stories he began to write short stories since 1949 to until his death for a long time he could not publish these stories in a collection of anthologies so there are as i said bajrang kode also categorized his stories uh, into uh, four categories one is social historical and political short stories second artistic humorous and short stories third tragic heart moving stories fourth autobiographical short stories fifth criminal life exposition short stories sixth anti superstition short stories seventh love stories domestic life short stories i i i quote while anubhav sate was expressed what is his understanding uh, how how he thinks when he writes short stories i quote anubhav sate the life i live 
see and experience is the life i write about no bird i am uh, um, i to fly on the wings of fantasy i am frog close to the ground when barbaria's ear was cut off i was sitting in the dark and watching sultan bhumikya and i were in amravati jail all facing mud charges mukul mulani eight the donkey out of anger is still alive all my characters are real and alive so anubhav uh, sate is trying to say that my life is the source to my stories what i experience what i observe what i you know what is my community so all this are the source to for my literary imagination so my literary imagination is rooted to my community my experience and in which i born and brought up so it's it's short story and a famous uh, uh, writer from maharashtra also commented on anubhav sate's short stories uh, is uh, pk atri acharya pk atri commented on anubhav short stories i quote so these stories are the stories of those who fight for living the bold that flows through the vein of the them all is of a fighter type each one of them wants to live honorably against offensive sources they apply their full strength with a view to be victorious their chest are always ready to receive strokes through all these stories maharashtrian temperament is evident anubhav sate has portrayed all this in equally strong powerful language and style so anubhav as i said uh, anubhav is literary imagination comes from his own uh, surroundings and life and milind also observed the same thing a major theme in anubhav sate work especially in his short stories is the problematizing of stereotypes related to dalits till then the dalits has been portrayed as a gangster a cheat a thief or a immoral baggage that these categories carry and investigate expose the manner in which dalits are written into the public imagination so dalits are always portrayed as a, a thief cheaters gangsters or immoral uh, communities or personalities but with the anubhav sate uh, uh, reorientation of the characters really changed the the style of uh, the nature of these short stories so he produced many powadas and uh, loknatya and to discuss in the discussion but i will focus that he was the inaugurator of the dalit literature in 1958 anubhav sate i think this is uh, also mentioned in poison bread so when uh, gail umbet translated anubhav sate's famous powada written on ambedkar that uh, was the only uh, instance where uh, you could see anubhav's reference in 1958 uh, in 56 ambedkar agreed to address the first the, the first literary conference organized uh, 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 by the uh, ambedkar uh, was died and uh, the literary conference was uh, postponed until 1958 in 1958 uh, organizers of the conference invited anubhav sate to deliver a keynote address in keynote address uh, that was the first dalit literary conference and most of the times uh, we begin the dalit literature mostly with the dalit panther movement and its robust uh, contribution to the dalit uh, literary uh, world but we 
most of the times we miss what anabosati spoke on the first dalit literary uh, in the first dalit literary conference that is i feel is very very important it is a two page uh, uh, keynote address but uh, which is i feel whatever we are uh, today debating and discussing in dalit literary literature uh, i think you could find that essence in 1958 itself i read is uh, i'm just it's it's not my translation but somebody is translate and in the fact a large number of dalits live in this state their ways of living are different and also they are attached to other classes in our society these people are much forwarded they cultural ethos in this country still they are being ex exempted these hard working men are different fundamental requirements does a dalit man hardly finds his reflected image in today's marathi literature his first demand is that the literature should be transparent like a mirror and a dalit man's living should be clearly reflected in it it is not quite inappropriate when someone wants to see his reflection in the mirror at present the writing in marathi gives us the image of a typical dalit man like a reflected image of a man in a way and gripped lake water the image we get is not true and is distorted and elongated one dalit community is the heart of our society so i further read the writer needs to know why a dalit works so hard without knowing this he can't write a few lines on him a writer needs to have a few lines on him a writer needs to have a divine vision to uh, vision so that he can see ambiguous existence of dalit he needs to have umbilical attachment with his community he needs to be objective in his approach finally i should have a faith in the uh, he should have a faith in the just struggle of dalit man and their final victory it means that the writer should be ambitious and innovative in his thinking i think three thing three to four things are emphasizing in his inaugural speech so anubhav sati was focusing the autonomous space of the dalit literary literature second anubhav sati was uh, also emphasizing that if you want to write about the dalits you should you should also have a, a kind of experience that really reflect the reality of the dalit life experience you should also have a belief in their just struggles and also fourth anubhav sathe is also emphasizing in inaugural speech that there should be a sense of organic relationship with the people with uh, uh, on whom you are writing i think that the role of organic intellectuals uh, is become very very important and also he famously fifthly he was also famously said that uh, the earth is not uh... gopani i'm sorry yes. to interrupt you if you can finish in 5 minute that uh... yes, yes 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 thank you so he was also emphasizing in his inaugural speech the dalit uh, uh, the literature of the dalits should center around the human rather than the god centric so that's where is a famous uh, uh, no uh, slogan that uh, this earth is not on the sheshanas it is uh, the it, this earth is be uh, i just exactly quote this 
this globe is not located on the hood of the holy serpent it is is holded by the palms of hands of dalit men i think he is trying to say that the literature should be around the humans rather than the imaginative god and so on so forth so what we are discussing in today's dalit literary uh, discourse the autonomous space for the dalits uh, literature its aesthetic contributions and the uh, experience on all those things i think anubhav sathe rightly pointed out a given a, a direction which was so deep and so insightful that we could connect uh, to this contemporary dalit uh, literary writing anubhav sathe also wrote many powadas on stalin grant and berlin he also wrote on famine uh, on uh, powada on famine in bengal he also wrote a powada on uh, uh, telangana arms struggle so in a way anubhav sathe had a, a global vision and that is how with his though he was a, uh, because most of the times dalit uh, dalis in the communist movements largely if you see the history of uh, communist uh, struggles their intellectuals roles most of the times dalit dalis are reduced to the either cadre or mass who support the movement and also local level intellectual who can represent that ideology or party but here is the personality anubhav sathe who became a, a very important writer who respond from book issues to the global i think that's where is powadas and stalingrad berlin famine in uh, bengal and this uh, arm struggle in telangana all clearly indicate to us is a, a emancipatory vision a transnational uh, anabos transnationalism a solidarity beyond boundaries and that's where if you read his uh, uh, traveler uh, because he got a opportunity to visit russia uh, in uh, in uh, when he got a opportunity to visit russia so he wrote a uh, after his russia tour he wrote a traveler i think that was the first traveler uh, in my own understanding that was the only uh, first traveler written by the dalis documenting his foreign visit uh, where uh, when he visited the russia he was uh, interacting with the common man trying to see uh, what we imagined what kind of new world we imagined through uh, revolution what is happening uh, at the grassroots level in russia so is in traveler clearly indicate is 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 solidarity is a vision of the uh, uh, is a vision of the global solidarity uh, in bringing the uh, oppressed uh, uh, oppressed to challenge the exploitation so is last last i would like to focus uh, that though he was a fully full time cadre i mean involved actively in communist movement in the last phase of his life is attract uh, no he inspired to the ambedkar thinking he he published his famous novel fakira in 1959 and in 1961 he got uh, he uh, this novel got state award he dedicated his famous novel fakira to the baba saheb ambedkar so he also wrote uh, a very famous powada uh, 
on babasaheb ambedkar the the poet i just read out take a hammer to change the world so saying went bhim rao why is the elephant stuck sitting in the mud of slavery shake your body and come out take a leap to the forefront the rich have exploited us without end the priest have tortured us as if stones had eaten jewels and thieves had become great sitting on the chariot of unity let us go forward to break the chains of class and caste hold to the name of beam so with this it is clear that from mid of the 1955 oh, money please start I, to finish in 2 minute oh. yes so with this it is clear that he was in the end he was attracted to the ambedkar thinking and most of the people refused to see this face anabau sate face from the full time communist uh, uh, thinker to a journey to the ambedkar thinking so this one if we are not able that the journey from comes uh, uh, now party a cadre to ambedkar right uh, uh, thinker i think we will miss the large uh, part of his life in his contribution i read uh, i end by reading one paragraph anabhav sathe journey from illiterate to legendary literary writer and an organic intellectual is marked by the everlasting legacy in the field of indian literature in general and dalit literature in particular being born in a mong caste is a uh, caste is experience extreme poverty untouchability and constant exclusion are deeply influenced his literary production reflection and aesthetic anubhav sathe active involvement in communist movement interaction with people and literature within the communist have created a set of tools and the society and helped him to express his thoughts the history of communist leadership and intellectual tradition is largely dominated by upper caste and class the subalterns within which are neglected to flag carriers and mass who constitute the base of party anubhav sate reverses this trend and become a leading writer and artist who creatively changed the nature of mobilization and literary writing though he was involved in communist movement in his early days his themes characters concerns of writings are strongly rooted in dalit life so his short stories novels are become a ethnographic document of subaltern groups and their life in maharashtra his inaugural speech to the first dalit literary conference in 1958 is foregrounded the vision and direction of the future of dalit literary production is emphasis uh, in his speech is deeply rooted in the full ambedkar thinking of purpose of literature and its aesthetics anubhav sate writings like journey to russia and povadas and stalingan berlin clearly indicate his vision of emancipatory literature and transnational solidarity against oppression his last journey towards ambedkar thinking create a new phase of anubhav sate thinking which negate the one dimensional reading of anubhav sate life and writing is reorientation from communist to ambedkar thinking make us to understand the necessity of caste class praxis in dalit intellectual traditions thank you thank you very much i am extremely sorry for the uh, long uh, uh, time that i took thank you dr gopani i think it was very informative so we know now very well about uh, anna bhausarte i thank you uh, for introducing anna bhausarte to english speaking audience it was 
um, it, I think your work is very important and has immense value. And we need to we need to we need to work uh, look for the more scholars uh, personalities from the marginalized community. They had contributed uh, in the process of nation building, and uh, your work is. Uh, and one of the those. So I have many things to say and question also, but uh, I will stop here and I will invite Dr. Van Kede to comment on his speech. Dr. Van Kede, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can, I, can you hear me uh, properly yes. now? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, a very warm Jabim and revolutionary greetings to all of you. Uh, and first of all, uh, thank you to uh, uh, Vijayashi, Madam, for uh, uh, making part of such an important event. Uh, thank you, Nishikant, for my introduction. And uh, of course, Chandraya, for such a lucid and comprehensive coverage of Navao's work. And probably even I will be having this similar kind of handicap, uh, the way uh, Chandraya suggested that he was unaware or not read a lot about Navao uh, for a very, very long time. And it, this was a kind of a hidden jewel uh, within the academic and literary tradition. A um, uh, similar kind of ignorance is there also with me for a very, very long time. And uh, even though I'm, I'm from Maharashtra, I, I studied in Nagpur. Uh, even Nagpur is often been called as the uh, cultural capital of the Dalit movement. Uh, even though we will find that Annabhau's name or his work or his uh, ideological or philosophical oeuvre is not being debated uh, within even the, in that particular sphere where uh, the Buddhist Ambedkarite or middle class Dalit movement are very, very popular and powerful. Even those cultural sites, you'll find that uh, that Anabao is not been debated uh, in a kind of bigger way. Uh, so my will, mine, uh, my comment will be comments will be a little bit endorsing what uh, what Chandraya was continuously arguing uh, about the neglect and ignorance or some kind of a invisibility that we often see vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis, um, um, uh, Annabau's work. Uh, and, and, and same to what uh, the, the, the way uh, Chandra also read some of the English work. Uh, I'm also very fortunate to meet uh, Milind Award when I joined JNU. And uh, I, I believe that the, the way Milind engages with the Dalit question, mainly bringing, uh, 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 bringing Annabau's literature or literary work, uh, uh, to understand not only the Dalit experiences and the uh, political conditions, uh, but somewhere also suggesting that somewhere Annabhau is doing more than that, that he is not only experiencing the Dalit condition uh, and writing something very imaginative in, in, a, in a fictional language, but something more than that. And probably uh, I believe that uh, that small booklet that uh, Milin published um, on Annabau is one of the fascinating work and those who wish to understand anything uh, on Annabau, I think at least for the English audience, that is the, uh, that is the one of the foundational work uh, which is there available for all of us. And uh, it, I'm, I'm kind of happy that I'm also part of the similar uh, trajectory that uh, reading uh, uh, Millen's work, interacting with him, and by uh, by discussing various formats of Annabau's work, I got to know about the the giant personality that Annabau is. And in last many years, now of course I can read and write in Marathi, so of course I got an opportunity to read other other important seminal works that Annabau has produced. Uh, and therefore, uh, this particular idea that uh, there is a neglect, there is an uh, there is a kind of a erasure or uh, some kind of uh, 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 marginalization that uh, Annabau face in Marathi literature or in general uh, is a kind of a valid argument or kind of which, which of course one need to endorse. Uh, uh, and this is a kind of a popular argument within the uh, Maharashtra Dalit, lit, Dalit uh, uh, literary circles and even in the academic community. Uh, so of course, uh, uh, what uh, uh, Chanaya was the, the way Chennai presented in a very comprehensive and detailed fashion, uh, almost a kind of a literary giant, writing almost enormous writings uh, from songs to poems to ballads uh, to short stories to novels to plays to travelogues to political essays. You take any name and you'll find that um, uh, Anabhau's contribution is there on, on, on this particular part. Uh, and uh, um, most importantly, of course, 
like uh, like he was of course writing on caste and community and the working class movement at that part of time uh, uh, i wanted to make one a small comment on on uh, the di distinction that that uh, anabo brought in the literary circle uh, one is of course what i call the the arrival of the dalit hero uh, even in ambedkar's writing you'll find that uh, the 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 way Amb the way the Dalit condition is reproduced in, in his writing. Uh, it was almost about the precarity and the, the victimhood and the, the terrible uh, uh, conditions under which Dalits were basically surviving. And there was a kind of a hope that the modern state or the modern society will allow the Dalits or untouchables to, to escape that terrible conditions and emerge as a, as a normal human being. Uh, and some kind of a right bearing citizen. That is what uh, even in Ambedkar's writing we see that Ambedkar somewhere wanted to challenge that precarity and allow individuals to emerge as a normal human being, as a citizen of this modern nation state. Uh, in, 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 in Anabau's writing, we'll find that something more than that. Like for that matter, the arrival of what I call a Dalit hero. Like when you read Fakira, uh, it is not just a kind of a tale about uh, uh, about a revolutionary who is contesting against the colonial power. But he, uh, the uh, Anabo also made it a point that Fakira is also belong to the most marginalized community, mainly the monks, and the the way he he challenges his social and and class condition to become a revolutionary, to become a challenger, not only to the colonial power, but also to the feudal elites of that part of time. Uh, that kind of an assessment that Dalit has, Dalit uh, uh, body has a, has a capacity and courage to become a hero. Uh, that capacity is very much visible in, in Annabau's work. Um, uh, and, and of course, the, the, the other novel, uh, Vajanta, where again, the, the, the Tamasha performer, the woman is a Tamasha performer, uh, his female characters are also very, very strong. Um, they, are, they, are, they are strong agents and appear as if what they call conscious rational being. They are not just, as I said, victim of the uh, terrible social order. They are strong and rational. Um, and, and kind of the, the charisma and heroism that, that is attached to, to the Dalit bodies in, in Anabau's work. So that is something which is very, very crucial. Probably the only other, other space where you can see such kind of characters is recently uh, Paranjit's film, where in Kala or in Kabali, both the Dalit male and the female characters are absolutely powerful. Uh, they are not docile, humble, or victim of the caste system, but they are conscious and proud uh, inheritors of a social consciousness. They are basically uh, strong agents of their, their, their life. Uh, so that possibility was explored by Anna Bhau uh, almost, uh, uh, almost 50 years earlier that Dalit uh, body is not only about victimization and atrocities, but he also inculcate the, the capacity and courage to topple and challenge the conditions in which he is living. And through that, the idea of a Dalit hero. I think this is one of the uh, major uh, way of dealing with the Dalit body, which Annabhau suggests. Uh, now, uh, just to make two or three major uh, small comments that uh, I thought are, are crucial. Uh, one is, of course, that um, uh, 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 Annabhau was part of the leftist engagement and, and, and while being the part of the Communist Party and working for, as, a, as, a, as a cadre or the, the leader of the Communist Party, uh, he also understood that the, the class question uh, also have some kind of some other darker sides, mainly the, the side of the social reality, mainly the caste question. And therefore, in his writing, we'll also find that he was mainly con concentrating on class and caste, labor and humiliation, revolution and the social transformation. There is always a clubbing of both. There is not just one single way of dealing with the character. He, he is also, he is of course born into a, a, a terrible social condition uh, and of course a precarious class conditions and both clubs together to create a very, very precarious condition of the working class. And therefore uh, the issue of class and caste, labor and humiliation uh, and the future of what you call a revolution and transformation uh, is kind of continuously work uh, in his writing. Uh, so, uh, second, Chandraya also suggested that there is a kind of a movement of 
from uh, of uh, anabo from uh, from being a revolutionary or being a part of the communist legacy uh, to become an ambedkarite in the later phase i think that somewhere uh, there is a kind of a misreading in that case why because uh, uh, probably uh, anabo never uh, kind of um, away from what the, what you call the caste question uh, he was continuously writing about caste issues clubbing it with the class question and trying to educate what you what you what uh, what he called the 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 leaders of the communist party uh, the caste question especially about the urban poverty unemployment and what what uh, what it is called the vagabondness of the dalit working class mainly uh, their unemployment and their impossibility to get a proper job in mumbai uh, that that is brilliantly portrayed in most of his social st stories uh, recently uh, if you read junet sheik's recent work on mumbai's uh, working class uh, conditions he he acknowledged anubhav's work for for what he called providing a kind of a social history of working class by uh, evoking something called almost unheard anecdotes and events related to the dalit bahujan working class population in mumbai that uh, the 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 it is a working class dalits are part of the working class but because of their the social conditions because of their social identity uh, there is some kind of a, a problem that every day uh, dalit working class face in mumbai and this is one of the very very important form and through that probably uh, 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 in his writing this particular idea that caste question is also as equal as the class issue and then that that alliance that solidarity uh, 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 that solution anubhav offers continuously and the the last poem which um, uh, chanaya quoted uh, where he is basically trying to imagine that 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 alliance between the caste and the class uh, uh, solidarities mainly the communist and the ambedkarite and therefore uh, when he he suggests that jag badal khaluni ghav sanguni gale gele mala bhimra like take a hammer and strike a blow to the world that's what uh, bhimra told me uh, this suggestion somewhere brings that kind of a revolutionary militancy uh, in just two lines there, there are two these are just two lines but you can see the militancy the the uncompromising way to deal with the change and how ambedkar is engaged in that change so just in two lines he is making that kind of a solidarity and 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 offering a solution to the the caste and the class question uh, so i believe that somewhere uh, this idea that uh, there was a later part in in anubhav's work that which is basically then reached to ambedkar movement i think somewhere there is this gap uh, i don't see at all i believe that uh, anubhav was continuously engaged and enrolled in the social question and through that location he was engaging with the class issue mainly the issues offered by the communist party at that part of time and all his writing you'll find uh, that kind of an alliance that kind of an uh, kind of acknowledgement that poor working classes in india are also deprived socially deprived communities and through that kind of an uh, social deprived experiences and the class problem that are there in the urban times both creates a kind of a distinct identity which anubhav uh, was creating at that part of time now Uh, uh uh just to make kind of a, a problem that we can see today and i think um, uh, uh, chanaya uh, also suggested on the similar line that there is invisibility uh, ignorance and erasure of the figure such an iconic figure uh, and the first ignorance is of course coming from the what they call the mainstream literary circle the the intellectual uh, literary uh, uh, circle in maharashtra the marathi intellectual literary uh, condition uh, the, 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 the it was mainly dominated by the social elites mainly brahmins and even uh, there were people who call themselves progressive or part of the left uh, progressive movement including vijay tendulkar or outside maharashtra mahashita devi uh, they were, the way they were celebrated similar kind of text like vijay tendulkar was also writing on caste and the the urban problems in mumbai uh, mahashwata devi was also writing on the tribal conditions and in their relationship with the revolutionary movement 
Anna Vausate was also writing on the similar trajectory. But the way non Dalits were celebrated by the progressive uh, 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 literary circle, uh, we'll find that similar uh, uh, acknowledgement or similar. Uh, offers were not given to, to Anna Bhav at all. The only person other than Anna Bhav, which was somewhere come close to that celebration is of course Namdev Dasal. And uh, there is kind of a, some kind of connectivity between uh, Anna Bhav, then uh, um, Babura Bagul and Namdev Dasal. Both are writing about Mumbai. Both, uh, all three of them are writing about uh, the, the, the conditions of the working classes and how the caste conditions somewhere make it more brutal and terrible all uh, every day. And all these three people were basically uh, uh, suggesting that there is a requirement of a revolutionary uh, a battle against such precarious condition. Uh, but you'll find that within all these people, Anna Bhav's work has not been celebrated much. Whereas uh, for that matter, Namde Dasal got some recognition within the left circle, but somewhere uh, um, Bagul, uh, Babura Bagul or Anna Bhav Sate, they, uh, they remain at the margin uh, often. Uh, second point I wanted to make is about the left Marxist political and intellectual class. Uh, like Mumbai was, of course, a very, very important center for the working class politics. And uh, Anabha was part of that particular movement. And he was 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 writer on class, capitalist, uh, capitalist exploitation, working class uh, struggles. Uh, he was also telling them that the, the precarious social conditions of everyday wage labor, unemployed youth and the, and the women uh, and the strikes, and of course, many other problems related to the urban poor. Uh, but you'll find that the, the, the left Marxist literary and intellectual circle within in Mumbai had almost no affection towards such writing because, as I said, Annabha was writing mainly on the class conditions um, and and making such an important pronouncement on multiple issues that are that were there within the the, the Communist Party. But you will not find a kind of a very detailed or deep engagement from anyone from the left Marxist circle. At least with Namdev Dasal, there was some correspondence uh, with, uh, uh, like for that matter, uh, uh, Vijay Tendulkar wrote uh, uh, a preface to Namde Dasal's work. But you will not find similar kind of a correspondence. You will find that there were some kind of a philanthropist help uh, to uh, uh, to Anabhau, like there is always in all the essays that are written on Anabhau today, uh, you'll, you'll find that one anecdote when Balraj Sahani, a very important uh, film figure, uh, helped Anabhau to go to Russia because Anabhau hardly had any money to travel uh, during that part of time. So that anecdote is often been celebrated that uh, 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 Balra Sani being a kind of leader, member of the Communist Party and a very progressive person, uh, somewhere helped Anna to, 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 to buy the ticket to, for travel. Uh, but otherwise, uh, as, an, as, an, as an engaged scholarly, uh, 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 as a scholarly engagement with Anna work, work, uh, like for that matter, uh, suggesting that what are the issues and criticism that one can offer to Anna Bhav's understanding, even that uh, model is not offered by the, the left Marxist circle in, Ma in Maharashtra at that part of time. Though he was working in Mumbai, though M Mumbai was, Bombay was one of the prime location for the working class movement, including when Dalit Panthers emerged in 1970s, late 1970s, even you'll find that though they understand the, the urban question in a very, very fascinating way and a very revolutionary way, even from the uh, Dalit Panthers uh, left uh, Marxist uh, understanding uh, had not acknowledged this his contribution in a fairer way. Uh, so uh, though he was continuously produced, has continuously produced and wrote on the question of Marxism, class issues, revolution, and the like, like, like for that matter, global uh, problems. But uh, the, the left and the progressive at that part of time failed to engage uh, with uh, Anna Bao's work. Uh, and probably the similar criticism there of the Dalit movement too. Uh, 
uh, Dalit movement for a very, very long time in Maharashtra particularly uh, has been what they called the Mahar centric, that it was a Mahar leadership that, that, that hegemonized the whole Dalit movement uh, and probably uh, more than the, the issues of the urban poor, uh, the Buddhist symbols became the dominant figures within the Dalit movement and mainly the political parties were comfortable not forming alliance with the working classes, but forming alliance with the elite laden parties, like the, those kind of political alliances were there. And through that, you'll find that uh, those who speak about a revolutionary language uh, or a progressive language, or try to build some kind of an alliance with the working class, uh, or for that matter, who has some kind of an association with the left Marxist communist tradition, uh, they were often been neglected within the, what we call Mahar, centric uh, Dalit leadership at that part of time. And, and you'll find that uh, Annabhau is the, the, the uh, uh, victim of that kind of a politics, which was there within, the, within Maharashtra about the Dalit politics. Uh, and probably therefore uh, one can suggest that uh, out of desperation, out of such kind of a visible negligence, uh, there is also what they call the making of the Mang leader. Uh, like uh, um, like um, uh, uh, in most of the essays that are written on Annabhau um, uh, or even in today's lecture, you'll find that his social location as a monk person has been celebrated on and off. Um, uh, and probably there is, there, is, there is some kind of an acknowledgement that just because he born to a monk community. And because of that particular location, uh, he, was been, he has been neglected and, and relegated towards, uh, towards margin. Uh, and therefore, probably uh, now there, there is a kind of a celebration of his social location in desperation because of the negligence that such a stalwart leader or a intellectual faced during his time. Uh, and therefore, uh, this, in most of the essays or commentaries, his social location as a monk is evoked or showcased uh, mainly to distancing him from the Maha leadership or even for that matter, Ambedkarite ideological orientation and democratic polity, like all these three, that Dalit movement is mainly a Maha leadership movement, uh, uh, Ambedkarite ideological orientation somewhere uh, distance itself from the revolutionary Marxist tradition and the democratic polity is mainly about electoral politics where because of their such a minority status, mainly the monks, uh, they do not have important uh, contribution in, in democratic polity and therefore they are continuously neglected and to challenge that neglect, uh, the, the idea that Anabhav is a Hmong leader, he's a kind of Hmong intellectual, he's an intellectual of the subcaste, that pronouncement is growingly loud in today's time. Uh, and, therefore you'll and, uh, and therefore you'll find that uh, the, the distancing is in general, like as I said, the, 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 this distancing or neglect is there, but this dis distancing is, is, is kind of overall, it's an overarching light for that matter, uh, the absence of English translation of Annabau's work and Chaneya was absolutely right to suggest that Fakira was translated after such a long time. Uh, uh, so, so, uh, so the 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 impossibility of the literary circles, mainly the intellectual and academic circle, uh, to understand that there are strong linchpins uh, that can discuss caste and class, um, but uh, uh, within the left intellectual circle or even the left circle, uh, Annabau Sate is not been seen as a linchpin for that discussion or as a part of what you call cultural or media or literary studies. Uh, this problem is kind of well taken. Uh, and therefore uh, his neglect and relegation demonstrate uh, the cunning and ins insincere institutional practices that fails to admire the Bhaujan intellectual capacities and courage with fairness. Like, everywhere that there is some kind of uh, insincerity and cunningness to relegate Anna Bhausati from the, the, from the discussion, especially uh, the Marathi literary circles and the left leadership must be interrogated for such stark neglect. Uh, he was writing for the mainstream audience with strong uh, Marxist left vocabulary and idioms and wanted to educate, educate them about the terrible social condition under, under which the Dalit Bahujan working class in Mumbai are surviving. Uh, however, no one paid much attention to his work. Uh, and th this is uh, one of the uh, problem that we continuously been arguing. Uh, 
uh, but away from the mainstream neglect and distancing. And I think one has to make a flip uh, in such kind of a, a passive discussion on, on Nabhav. Uh, so I will suggest that away from the mainstream uh, neglect and distancing, Nabhav is in today's context present and visible in people's movement. Uh, especially within the struggles of the most vulnerable groups and, and those are mainly suffering under capitalist development and also sorry, under Dr. Wan, sorry to interrupt you if you can finish it two minutes yeah i'll just la last two paragraphs uh, finish them uh, so today one can witness the presence of anabhav in the actual field grassroots activism and social movement especially in the marathwada region movements like uh, manvi hakka bhiyan under the maverick leadership of jija Egnath Award that introduced the revolutionary and transformative social message of Annabhau amongst the most deployed communities. Uh, people struggling for land rights against caste discrimination, illiteracy, issues of low payments as the wage laborers, etc., are contested at the rural or semi-urban centers and, and many other parts. Uh, often, the, often the words of Annabhau are evoked here, mainly in the social movements, to club the social and class problem together, providing the struggle of broader revolutionary outlook. Uh, today, away from the elitist discourse of Annabhau's importance in the literary and Marxist theory, it has become a symbol of social protest and struggle for most marginalized people. Annabhau is probably the only creative writer whose st statues are found in almost every big and small town of Maharashtra today, and has become a crucial inter interlocutor to frame uh, framing the policy related to social justice. Uh, the relegation of Annabhau as a Hmong leader or, or as a sub-caste leader, mainly to evoke a separate caste pride. This may be important to demonstrate how the contemporary Dalit movement has neglected such a stalwart mind. However, it presents Anabhav against again as a caste body and disallow him to emerge as a revolutionary intellectual or a maverick leader of the deprived masses. By fixing him into a caste category, though we empower and galvanize the worst of, worst of sections, however, we also trap the brilliant mind as a custodian of, custodian of community and values and not as a free and enlightened self that wrote and struggled for the greater national or, or, or even for universal change. It is the failure of the democratic polity and left liberal intellectual circle that even such a giant intellectual has to struggle to find the space in mainstream academic circle. Such giant figure does not require a philanthropist endorsement from the elite academic institution. Instead, it is a responsibility of the new generation of the Dalit Bhaujan intellectual class to go back to the social roots and celebrate the life and work of Annabhau with actual people. We have not given enough thought or even deep engagement with such creative mind. Instead, we often thought that Annabhau can be a good symbol to showcase the skirmishes, heterogeneities, and rupture within the Dalit social consciousness and political ideology today. Such reading of Anna, Annabhau may, be how, may have a political rationale. However, it defeats the philosophical grandeur and intellectual merit in which Annabhau was imagining this world. He must be seen and acknowledged as a political philosopher that explored the caste class nation revolution debates from the ground and provided the most authentic reflection on, on, on these values. Uh, I'm, I'm absolutely thankful to uh, CSDS, mainly uh, Professor Vijayashree for considering me to be part of such important event. And I congratulate uh, Chennaiya for uh, presenting such a, a comprehensive uh, uh, allocation on Annabal's work. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vankhede. I also wanted to make some comments on Dr. Gopani and have some question, but I think we are running out of time. But I thanks Dr. Vankhede for highlighting the three things very briefly I wanted to say. First, uh, first that uh, the characters of Annabhau Sati's stories, especially Dalit characters, they are not victimized and marginalized, but they are very powerful hero. And second, uh, second thing that uh, there is a problem in seeing that uh, Sate, Annabhau Sate was transformed from Marxist to the Ambedkar, right? And caste question was very central to him and his writing from the very beginning. And third point that uh, his marginalization may be due to uh, his location, particular location in caste and perhaps deliberate. So I thanks Dr. Vankhede for his very important comment. I think we will take only one question and Dr. Gopani may reply and then we can finish it. Yeah, you want to? Yeah. Ah, yeah, please. Okay. 
Okay, so Can we I will just, take, huh, please, you start. Uh, I, I should thank Chandraya for accepting this, uh, to talk on this figure and sorry, because you are just, just started working on this figure and the immense pressure you must have had, especially when there are no sources. That is an incredible challenge. And it is quite in the spirit of Anna Bhav Sate, quite brave of you. Thank you. And uh, I should thank Harish Vankri for his wonderful insights. And I think this complicates uh, the discourse, lays out the problems that we have in um, talking about intellectual history, what Dalit intellectual history can be, and it entanglements with caste politics, not just with caste Hindu politics, but also Dalit politics, which is very important, right? But I was just struck because one of the characterization of um, Dalit ideology or uh, the worldview of the oppressed has most often been seen as parochial. Here you have a figure who overturns that imagination of Dalit vision as parochial, not, not at all. Instead, now we have an irony where we are rediscovering him via Europe. I think most of his works are translated in European socialist, democratic, and communist countries. Right, we still have to recover him in the English, Indian languages and English speaking um, institutes or whatever. You know, our Linga Frank has not, uh, not at all done justice to him in that sense. But what strikes me is the ways in which uh, he is a quintessential artist, right? Not just a writer, artist. I mean, in terms of uh, having a troupe of his own, which was called the Red Flag Art Troupe, and also acting in it, directing, writing scores of plays, right? And all that. And so you have a symphony of artistic forms here. Absolutely amazing. But one thing that struck me, I'm not going to take to politics because Harisha has laid out uh, the problems and the prospects there very clearly. One very important thing is the ways in which he problematizes aesthetic itself. If I remember your, uh, reading your paper rightly, he raises the question of what is perception? What is ex experience? How is it related to ontology? How is then art itself in, in, you know, intimately Can you connected? Can please try to yeah, finish it? Two minutes. Right. So I, he uses the metaphor of a frog to remain grounded on earth rather than that of a bird, which can take wings of fantasy flights of fantasy, right? That is one thing. His two very important stories remind, uh, you know, are horrors. I mean, they evoke the horrors of deprivation. For example, the story of uh, Gold from Grave, wherein the Dalit character Bhima forages the graves at night. The, body, uh, the dead bodies, the gold from the dead bodies. I mean, that is the level to which it drives the human existence and asks what is it to be human? That's a very fundamental question. It's not about Dalits anymore. It's about what is it to be human? The last question. Please, huh, yeah. please finish. The, I think what is fundamentally important about Nanabhav Sate is um, the ways in which it binds the nationalist and the transnational movements together, at least in his imagination, his political vision of it. And if he goes to Russia, he looks for the soul of Russia, not in the um, elite, but in the proletariat. He takes the violence of Russia to know what is the soul of Russia from the third year it passed. I think it's very important because I, it, I mean, it, this figure, you know, overturns a lot of, um, her, you know, thorny questions, which have been, you know, in a certain sense, limited Dalit discourse in a way, not just Dalit, but, um, you know, uh, what is it to be oppressed and what is emancipation? What is substantive meaning of freedom? So sorry, uh, Nishikant. Okay, thank you for coming. Only one question will take on Prabharji. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, um, Gopani. Uh, and uh, see, uh, I had many questions, uh, in fact, comments, uh, but because of the very well informed and detailed commentary uh, which uh, Harish gave, uh, I won't ask. I will. Uh, I will basically make one uh, suggestion uh, that is uh, related to uh, this. Uh, the name that you mentioned in passing uh, about the Hindi writer Mahadevi Verma, uh, who is a chronicler of uh, Dalit uh, characters or experience, if I heard correctly. Uh, so uh, just a minor corrective that she is not a Dalit writer. Yes, she is uh, known for her, uh, for making the Dalit or the subaltern characters. Uh, the mainstream characters, yeah. So, so that's the thing that I wanted to point out. Thank you. Okay. And
there is two question were similar means they wanted to know that uh, Anna Bhav Satif earlier was against Dalit ideology and when he was neglected by Communist Party, then he shifted to Ambedkar camp. So your comments. So please, uh, Dr. Gopani, finish in four to five minutes. Okay. Yes. So am I audible? Yes, yes. So thanks. Thanks for all. Uh, that shows you are really, uh, no, you, your enthusiasm, your commitment to the uh, the invisible thinkers uh, in bringing those literatures into institutions. I am thankful to the all the Arish, particularly Arish, who have elaborately uh, those issues to take more and more seriously uh, when we talk about Dalit intellectual tradition. I am keep saying Dalit intellectual traditions. Dalit intellectual history. I think there is a need to focus. I also thank uh, other people. Let us see. Uh, I first think Anabhav Sate was from the beginning to his until his death. He was very much conscious about caste. What how caste, you know, deep rooted into a society, life, and community. I am only was pointing out that in the mid of the 50s, he was ex, uh, explicitly began to own a set. Though there was in his writings, novels, short stories, caste was the running thing. He was not, he was not a person who was romantically described. Him. He was not even fully equipped with the communist language. His characters, his language was very much there in the Hmong community, Dalit community, or Subaltern community. It was so explicit from the mid of the uh, 50s when he addressed the, that we can see when he addressed uh, Dalit literary conference as a keynote speaker. That's where he was focusing what should be the direction of the Dalit literary uh, writing. That's where I was trying to bring. Uh, and when he dedicated a novel, it is very much explicit when you have an explicit assertion and you have a different impact on the next generation of people is in his short range. That's what I'm uh, just uh, was pointing out. And the second thing is uh, cost, <clears throat> subcast. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, see, I would say in my limited reading, I would say that. There is a neglig uh, communist, though he contributed enormously, communists have neglected because most of the communists are uh, dominated by the upper caste. I, I tell you, when I was, I inquired a person who is a senior most leader and activist in Andhra Pradesh, uh, who is from Dalit community. He worked for 30, 40 years in communist movement. I asked him, do you know Anabhav Sathya? is here. Why he didn't know Anabhav Sate, why only he knows Namruddhi Pal and Dange? What made him to know about Dange? That's where the politics of literature that circulate. Who translated it? How they translate in selective way? We have to understand. And also, when it comes to Dalit, I would say that though in the beginning, Days, Dasal recognized Anabhav Sate uh, for uh, referring and uh, introducing to the Dalit movement. And uh, only Dasal was the one who recognized to some extent. And the entire Dalit movement somehow neglected. And precisely because if you read the pies and bread, and the majority literary writings come from a Mahar community. It is not a bad thing, but the point is how, when a contemporary Dalit writer's translations got attention in the English world, a person who contributed significantly missed. So that means today, 
our realization should be how do we go beyond one or two communities and look bring a new icons of the dalit assertion from different states that's where anabhosat i referred from the tamil nadu lc gurusam and precisely because from the gopani so, please try to finish it please hmm. the third thing is anabhosati precisely it was engaging how do you reclaim the human agency how do you he struggled to reclaim the human agency through different forms is very much important second uh, priyadarshini madam was rightly pointed out he had a imagination of the international solidarity uh, towards uniting the oppressed against the exploitation so is is vision of the liberation beyond boundaries beyond his own caste uh yes because obviously when uh, when everybody neglected anubhav sate when marx began to own him so it appears that marx are reducing anubhav sate to his caste but in essence it is not that's what happens in the caste system imagine when kanshiram was the only person who brought many anti caste thinkers to the public domain in the politics we have to learn from the politics how kanshiram introduced many anti caste thinkers who were neglected for long time in every state he was talking about gurram jashiva in andhra pradesh dr gopati please finish it please yeah. finish so one therefore uh, i would say that uh, there is a need to focus on unknown figures within the dalit discourse and think about their liberative visions beyond boundaries beyond caste and see their how they have imagined the egalitarian uh, society so i thank uh, priyadarshini madam nishkant kolge so arish csds fraternity uh, chinarao sir and friends who have participated in this uh, discussion uh, we will definitely we will continue to have a more dialogue Uh, not uh, around anubhav sate and also around the unknown figures who significantly contributed for the egalitarian nation of this country thank you okay uh, i would like to thanks uh, dr gopani dr vankhede and everyone present here uh, and now we we are going to end the session thank you thank you very much